All right, so this past weekend in Toronto was completely cold and miserable outside. So instead of getting out of the house, I decided to stay in and create that quick little commercial you just saw. But here's the thing, I was not paid to make that video. In fact, I did it entirely on my own time. And if I'm being honest, much of that time was spent frustrated, shots not lining up, edits not really working out the way I had envisioned in my head, and also just making my studio a complete mess. Let's take it a step further. If you remember that pizza commercial I made a few years back, that was like a three day shoot. I can't even remember how long that took to edit, and I was not paid to make that either. Making videos for free is a bit of a polarizing topic within the creative community, but I do think nowadays, most people would agree that making free videos is pretty important when you're just starting out. But I've been making videos as my full-time career for the past seven years now, 12 actually if we're including part-time, so why on earth at this stage would I still be giving up my entire weekend to make a video I'm not even being paid to make? Creativity is a muscle. When a basketball player makes it to the NBA, they don't sit back and say, all right, I've made it to the NBA, I never have to practice again. Professional athletes, despite already being one of the best in the world at their sport, still practice way more often and with way more intensity than anyone else on the planet. But for some reason, I feel like there is still this misconception around the creative community that practicing is only for beginners. Like somehow, by not being paid to make something, you're wasting your time or you're devaluing your own work, which in my opinion, couldn't be further from the truth. Like I said, creativity is a muscle, and like any muscle, if you don't work on it, it's going to get weaker. Now you might be thinking, couldn't you technically practice with real clients while also getting paid? And yeah, technically you could within a certain threshold, but it's not always a great idea. The best practice is when you can afford to screw up and make mistakes, try new things without the risk of disappointing a client or hurting your own reputation. Now the Celsius video was an opportunity for me to do do just that. I had some ideas in mind, so I gave it a try on my own time and on my own dollar. We have this animated sort of concept where we link a bunch of shots together, maintaining a sort of flow throughout the edit, and in doing so I actually learned a lot about what works and what doesn't, what I would do differently next time. Now what was unexpected was that the main challenge I found throughout that entire edit was getting the can to look consistent. Each shot in that video is shot with a different lighting setup on a different camera from a different angle, we have fish tanks involved, this made achieving seamlessness through the whole edit incredibly difficult. Now what I actually ended up resorting to was taking a still of the same can from the beginning and superimposing it throughout the edit over top of all the other cans. This was incredibly tedious, I would not recommend it, and if I had encountered this kind of thing for the first time during a real client project, I would be losing my mind. But because I've now already gone through this in a far less stressful practice sort of scenario, I know now what I need to do differently next time so that in the future, I don't waste a potential client's time and money. Speaking of the cans, I thought it was a nice touch on the cheers shot when I added condensation to each can. And of course, I got this overlay from our incredible sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an online subscription service. I've been using it for so many years now, I honestly don't know what I would do without it. And with a subscription, you get unlimited access to their high quality, royalty-free stock footage library. Storyblocks has a ton of templates, overlays, motion backgrounds. Even this background I used throughout the entire video is also from Storyblocks. And without that background, my vision for this video just wouldn't have been possible. I have relied heavily on Storyblocks for both personal and client projects for many years now as they have everything I need to take my videos to the next level. If you're interested in checking them out, make sure you go to the link in the description below or go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer to learn more. Somewhere along the journey of being a video creator, you start to realize that the value of your work doesn't come from what camera you use or how expensive your lenses are. It's all about your ideas and your ability to execute them. This brings us to our next category, flex. 
One of the many benefits of creating spec work is that you can use it in your portfolio to show off what you're capable of. One thing I will say is that when you do create a spec project, make sure you disclose that it is a spec project and it's not a real client project for that brand. It is important to be honest. Now let's say historically you have made certain types of videos for a certain type of client. Well, spec work is now your opportunity to diversify your content and show the world and other prospective clients what else you're capable of. Sometimes it can be easy to fall into the trap of being a one-trick pony. I am definitely guilty of this, but making other stuff on your own time gives you a chance to show that you're capable of creating in different styles and pulling off more impressive techniques. In doing this, you of course expand your portfolio and as a result, you open yourself up to more potential clients and larger budgets. Budgets. Let's say, for example, that I've only ever made videos for food, which is actually kind of true. But what if I wanted to branch out into other types of products? Maybe it's health and beauty. Maybe it's watch companies. If I don't have videos like that already on my feed or on my portfolio, it's going to be very difficult to convince those brands to hire me for something that I've never done before. So logically, if I took the time out of my schedule to create videos in those product sectors, this would drastically increase my chances of landing a client for one of those types of products. But moving along, last but not least, creating for yourself. At the end of the day, when creating is your job, it is important to find time to create the projects that you actually want to create. Personally, I get a ton of satisfaction from posting behind the scenes content online because I love interacting and engaging with the online creator community. When you create content for yourself, not only can it be creatively fulfilling, but it also opens you up to networking opportunities and a chance to meet like-minded individuals on the same journey. Now you can obviously create behind the scenes style content for real client projects, I do it all the time, but in all honesty, I find that filming behind the scenes during a real shoot to be a bit of a distraction because I need all of my attention and focus on the project at hand. That said, I find that it's definitely easier to create behind the scenes content for spec work because it's on your own schedule, you have full creative freedom, and underrated, it's actually a fantastic way to stay productive and sharpen your skills when you're in between shoots. Now, I'm not saying that behind the scenes content is mandatory, that's just what I enjoy doing, but it certainly helps when it comes to putting yourself out there, growing your network, and meeting other creators. We live in the era of sharing, so we might as well use that to our advantage. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer, and I will see you in the next video. Oh,